Hi everyone, this is Sarah from Japan and welcome back to another prophetical read-along. Today's read-along is not really a read-along per se. Normally it's a commentary. Usually um, for the Old Testament books, I've been reading the commentary, especially before the prof uh, prophetical books, like through Isaiah. I started in Isaiah. Uh, I've been reading the commentary out of my Bible so that it, um, you will get an overview of what the book is about. And um, I don't have an intro for this one yet because I'm still working on it, but I wanted to get to the intro, the um, not the intro, but the commentary, so you would know what you're going to be hearing over the next couple days. Okay, so um, we're going to be reading out of the book of Daniel. All right, so I'm going to read to you the commentary taken out of my uh, uh, King James Version Bible. All right, so please listen carefully. It's a long commentary, so I might have to break this into two parts. Please bear with me. All right, so comments on Daniel. The book of Daniel is the revelation of the Old Testament. So it's like it it's like the revelation in the New Testament, the book of Revelations, okay? Daniel was a crier of the coming of the Lord. The book is made of 12 chapters with two major sections. The first 6 chapters deal with God's prov providential care in Daniel and the exiles' lives. The last 6 chapters include Daniel's vision and, and reveals God's plans and purposes for the future. Daniel, a contemporary of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, is also the author of the book which bears his name. He was of noble birth and perhaps of the royal family of Judah. Okay, the date. Daniel was among the first, uh, first group carried captive to Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar in uh, 605 BC during the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. The second of the three uh, deportations came in 597 BC with Ezekiel taken captive and 10,000 others also deported. The final fall of Jerusalem and Judah came in 586 BC. The events in Daniel's history and, prof and prophecy extend from 605 B.C. to the third year of the reign of, of Cyrus in 535 B.C. Daniel's final penning of this book is estimated to have been near 535 B.C. Okay, so, sorry. Problems. The book of Daniel has faced critical attacks with many uh, suppositions of inaccuracies and uh, historical impossibilities in this prophecy. However... However, archaeological discoveries have soundly vindicated the, the authenticity of the uh, assertions of Daniel. See, there's a lot of things like in the Bible that a lot of people will say, oh, those are just stories. But um, I've seen, I don't remember the name of the archaeologist, look him up, um, the guy that found the, you know, ark, Noah's ark, okay, on, Matt, and on Mount Ararat. He actually you know, excavated and he found the ark, okay? And then um, he's also the same guy that went scuba diving in the Red Sea and with his son, and they found um, chariot wheels, Egyptian chariot wheels, okay? So, you know, there's a lot of people who will say, you know, disregard the Bible and say, oh, it's just a book of stories, but there's archaeological proof for everything that's in there. Um, Sodom and Gomorrah, they found sulfur, Okay, and, and there was, it was, um, he found layers of black, burnt stuff in there, but sulfur in the ground, okay? Also, he found 12, the 12 stones that were set up, I believe, um, in the Old Testament. So anyway, going, moving on. Um, however, archaeological discoveries have soundly vindicated the, the authenticity of the assertions of Daniel. Some of the prophecies by Daniel unfolded so accurately that some said the account had to be written after the events happened. But God revealed to Daniel what was going to transpire, and God's revelations are accurate. What? Sections of Daniel were written in Hebrew, and several chapters were written in Aramaic. That's uh, chapter 2, verses 46 uh, through 7, uh, through chapter 7, uh, Verse 28, is written in what is considered to be 6th century B.C. Aramaic. Sorry, the print on my... I had to take pictures of my Bible because I couldn't bring the thick one in my bag with the computer. It's a little bit heavy. So I took pictures. So the print is really small. So if I'm squinting, it's because I'm looking at my screen and trying to figure out, you know... I'm trying to read it. Okay, so... Oh. All right. The portions which concern Israel were written in Hebrew, and those that, that concern the Gentiles... Gentile empires were written in Aramaic. 
Okay, so those concerning Israel, Hebrew, other nations, um, Aramaic. Daniel, together with the book of Revelation, provides invaluable information concerning Israel and the nations affecting her prior to the millennium. That's coming up soon. Okay, and a lot of the prophecies right now in Daniel are coming to pass. The Captivity of Daniel and His Companions, Chapter 1. The initial verses, verses of Daniel describe the background and dates of events. Jehoiakim was on the throne in Jerusalem, appointed by Pharaoh Necho, the king of Egypt, in 16, uh, 608 B.C., shortly before the invasion of Judah by Babylon in 605 B.C. Some sources... Um, so, sorry, 600 B.C. then. Some sources use 606 B.C. as the year of this event. Daniel, of royal lineage, became a slave when he was taken captive by the Babylonians. Along with three companions, Daniel was placed under Ashephiz, the master of the eunuchs, where they received special training and were in the court of the king. The other three Jewish youths were being trained as couriers, were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Their names were changed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The names were given to the slaves and captives were often changed as a sign that they were under subjection. Their new name related to the gods of the Babylonian the gods of the Babylonians. Daniel was also given a new name. However, the prophet whose name means God is my judge uses his real name in his writings. Okay. Sorry. The meaning of a person's name was of, was of great importance to the Hebrews. Nebuchadnezzar could not blot out the memory of Jehovah, the God of the Hebrews, by changing their names, and that's why he changed their names, so they would, you know, they would disregard their own God. But it didn't work. Daniel's name indicated that God is the final authority. Okay? So moving on to the next page here. I can't see that. He is the judge. Daniel was God's representative on earth, serving as a mouthpiece. I can't read that. I still can't read that. <laughs> All right. Okay, serving as a mouthpiece and a spokesman in the midst of the heathen. His person of his purpose of heart and commitment were established and he would not falter or turn away from God. Daniel and his companions became great influences in a heathen world. world. So, you know, even though they were commanded to do certain things, you know, like um, they were commanded to eat certain food. Um, they would not betray their God. And so, you know, they, they had um, where they just ate vegetables and beans and stuff instead of taking the meat that was offered um, to idols and stuff. And they refused to defile themselves with that, even though they could have killed them. Also, um, uh, Meshach, Meshach, uh, uh, sorry. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego um, also said that they would not bow, bow down to Nebuchadnezzar, and so he threw them into the furnace, and we'll hear about that later. Okay, And also Daniel, too, he was thrown in the lion's den for not bowing at, down to a golden image. Hi! あ、すみません、鈴木ですけど、今シンプルの証拠物でえっとお話し伝えたので証拠物にまってもらうようにしたいて、お受けば大丈夫ですか？あ、了解しました。じゃあまたしておきます。はい。あ、<笑> Sorry for the distraction. Okay, so anyway, um, Daniel was obviously the spokesman for the group of the four. He declared that they would not eat certain things that were on the king's table because they were apparently forbidden by the law of Moses. It, it may be the meat that was not butchered properly according to the, to the Levitical law. So that's in uh, Leviticus chapter 3, verse 17, um, chapter 7, verse 26, chapter 17, verses 10 through 14, and chapter 19, verse 26. Or it may have been offered to idols. Okay, um, Exodus 34, uh, verse 15, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 20. 
Regardless of the impending consequences, they took a strong stand and would not go contrary to their convictions. God honored their bold stand through commit, uh, thorough commitment and obedience to him. These men would continually take bold stands for God, and he would protect them. Daniel convinced his overseer to allow them to eat a special diet of pulse and drink only water for ten days. At the end of the period... The four youths' phys physical condition were so good that they were allowed to continue their diet. Verses 12 through 16. The pulse diet would have consisted of vegetables see, and grains such as wheat, barley, rye, beans, peas, and lentils. This does not mean that the Jews were strict vegetarians, but that they would not eat meats that were improperly killed or dedicated to idols. God gave these four young men knowledge and skill in the learning of wisdom. Daniel had a special gift from God in understanding visions and dreams. It was soon, and there's still people that have this gift in this modern day, and I have a friend who has this gift, okay? Daniel had a special gift from God in understanding visions and dreams. It was soon apparent that these men were superior to the others. Verses 17 through 21, this causes some uh, dissension among uh, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar's uh, magicians and court, you know, court people there. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar's dream and the rise of Daniel. Chapter 2. One of the king one of King Nebuchadnezzar's dreams mentioned made such an incredible an indelible uh, impression on his mind that he was troubled. Nebuchadnezzar was troubled. Okay? Distressed in his spirit and could not sleep. He needed an interpretation of the dream and called the magicians, the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans to show him the meaning of the dream. The practice uh, the practice of consorting with magic, witchcraft, sorcery, and other related art activities is forbidden in the scripture. None of these wise men could tell Nebuchadnezzar his dreams. He's like, you know, you got to tell me or I'm going to kill you. Because it was so disturbing to him that he needed an answer. The king didn't remember the dream, but he demanded that the Chaldeans tell him both the dream and the interpretation or they would be put to death. That means Daniel too. Because none of them... Uh, were able to reveal to the king what was involved. Verses 1 through 11. Nebuchadnezzar was very angry and demanded that all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. This would have included Daniel and his three friends. Verse, uh, verses 12 and 13. Uh, Daniel, in his God given wisdom, asked for time. Smart man. He was permitted to appear before the king. He was confident that God would give him a revelation. So he trusted God and the interpretation of the dream. Daniel was granted a stay of execution, which also spared the lives of his companions and the rest of the wise men of Babylon, so he could provide the interpretation of the dream. Verses 14 through 18. Daniel sought God and received a vision, and he was able to give the king a revelation of the dream. Verses 19 through 23. Nebuchadnezzar's dream was that of a great image, whose brightness was excellent and whose form was terrible. Excellent and terrible characterized the history of the Gentile powers from the days of Nebuchadnezzar and continuing on to the coming of Christ with his saints. The great image which uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw had five parts, the head of fine gold, uh, breast and arms of silver, uh, belly and thighs of brass, legs of iron, and feet of iron and clay, which were mixed. A stone not made, of, uh, a stone not made with hands, symbolic of Jesus Christ, appeared and smote uh, the image on the feet and toes, which symbolized the ten future kingdoms. The ten future kingdoms, okay, that the Antichrist is going to temporarily, you know, temporarily set up, revealed later in Daniel. These kingdoms, illustrated by the ten horns and ten toes, will be ruled by the Antichrist, but will be de uh, defeated and crushed by Christ. Verse uh, 31 through 35. The great Im image of Nebuchadnezzar's. Going to the next page. Dream cons uh, consisted of five materials which represented represented five great world empires, Babylon, uh, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and the revised Rome, which will be made up of ten kingdoms. That's the new Roman Empire here. Okay? Ten kingdoms in the last day. That's, uh, verses, uh, that's chapter 2, verses 45, 44 and 45, uh, chapter 7. Uh, verse 23 and 24, and Revelation 17, uh, verse 12 through 17. The head of gold on the image represented Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom of Babylon, the first of the five kingdoms in the vision. 
Babylon's world importance and the kingdom's activities go back to early history. After Noah's flood, Nimrod built the Tower of Babel in that area. The oldest center of civilization was also in the vicinity of Babylon. Sargon, a Semitic ruler, conquered Babylon about uh, 2300 BC. He extended his empire northward and westward to the Mediterranean Sea and eastward to what is modern-day Iran. However, Sargon was not able to hold the empire together, and Hammurabi, okay, another Semitic king responsible for the famous Code of Law, ruled that, the area, ruled that area. Following Hammurabi, the, the Kassites controlled Babylon for 600 years. The Elamites, the Elamites, okay, Elam, Iran, then controlled the area, followed by the Assyrian Empire overrunning the Emilites at Babylon until the time of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Sennacherib forced Babylon into servitude in 689 BC and deported many of her in inhabitants. Esarhaddon, his successor, rebuilt and reestablished Babylon some 20 years later. At that time, the father of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebopolassar, was appointed co-regent. He rebelled and took over the rulership as king of Babylon about uh, 625 BC. By about 607 BC, Babylon had defeated both the Assyrians and the Egyptians and were at the head of the world's uh, supremacy. At the time of this vision, Nebuchadnezzar served as its ruler. Babylon continued to dominate that part of the world for 70 years. 70 years. Okay, the time, if you go back to Jeremiah, um, you will hear about the 70-year judgment that God gave the Israelis. You know, they were to, to be taken into captivity because of their idol worshiping and their unfaithfulness to God. And for 43 years of that period was under the direct control of Nebuchadnezzar. The city of Babylon was considered the wonder city of the ancient world. The hanging gardens built by Nebuchadnezzar for his wife were one of the seven wonders of the world. Okay? There were many other phenomenal, phenomenal uh, structures and features which characterized Babylon, making it a most remarkable and outstanding city. The place of great glory, the beauty of the Chaldeans, pride was destined to, make, to be made desolate. For an in-depth description of Babylon, see the concluding discussion in, on uh, Second Kings, which, you know, if we get to that. <laughs> um, Lord willing that we get to that. Silver was the uh, second metal. Silver, okay, which is Nebuchadnezzar's image, okay, verses 32 to 35. The Medes and Persians were de depicted by the image, images silver shoulders and breasts in the king's dream. This Medo-Persian kingdom succeeded Babylon at the end of 20, 20 years, uh, of the 20-year captivity of the Jews and was the second kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar's dream to, to oppress Israel. Okay, chapter 2, verse uh, 39, chapter 5, verse 1 through 31, uh, chapter 8, verse 20, uh, chapter 9, verse 12, chapter 10, verse 1, chapter 11, verse 1 uh, through 3, and 2 Corinthians, or 2 Chronicles, sorry, 2 Chronicles, uh, chapter 36, uh, 22, Ezra, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. This kingdom was inferior in its form of government, form of government, wealth, luxury, and glory to the Babylonian Empire, just as silver is inferior to gold. However, it was not inferior in power, for it overthrew Babylon. In Babylon, the king had absolute power, but in the Medo-Persian Empire, the law was superior to the king. Okay, so this is where you're going to see you know, King Darius, I think. Um, the king could not alter a law, even if it was for the good of his subjects. Okay, so chapter 6. Verse 1 and then 14. Babylon took Israel captive, Jeremiah 25, but Medo-Persia uh, liberated her, Isaiah 44, uh, verse 28, 45, uh, verse 1 through 5, and Ezra chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, chapter 6, uh, verse 1 through 14. The Persians encouraged the, re the return of the Jews to their homeland in about 536. So Nebuchadnezzar enslaved them in and brought them to Babylon, but the Persians encouraged their return, okay? After 70 years in captivity, Zerubbabel uh, led about 50,000 Jews back to Jerusalem where they were instructed and encouraged to rebuild the temple. This construction was hindered because of the depth, death of Cyrus in 530 BC, but the work resumed 10 years later under the leadership of Ezra, the scribe, and the temple was completed and dedicated in 515 BC. 
The third part of the, the image of Nebuchadnezzar's dream was the belly and thighs of brass, verses 32, 35, and 39. This part of the great image symbolizes the Grecian Empire under Alexander the Great, the third empire revealed in the dream to dominate Israel in the time of the Gentiles. Uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 39, uh, chapter 8, verse 20, uh, chapter 21, chapter 11, verse 1 through 34. This empire became the greatest in, in territory of the first three. Alexander the Great, probably the most great, probably the greatest military genius of all time, uh, fought more than a hundred battles and conquered vast areas of the world. He died in the city of Babylon at the age of 32 years and eight months. After Alexander's death, the kingdom of, was divided with four generals, each ruling over separate areas. The fourth part of the image in Nebuchadnezzar's dream was the legs of iron, uh, verses 33 through 35 and uh, verse 40, which symbolizes the old Roman Empire. This empire was the fourth kingdom of the dream to oppress Israel, and they were oppressing Israel um, during, the, during Jesus' time and up until uh, 70 AD when they destroyed the temple. Okay? So it followed Greece as the outstanding world power. The Roman Empire was just illustrated as being stronger than the previous kingdom, since iron is stronger than gold, silver, or brass. The two legs of iron represent the eastern and western divisions of the old Roman Empire. This is important. You have the eastern and western divisions, okay? Many outstanding events and exploits follow in, this, in its history, making it a dominant world force uh, following the supremacy of the Gre uh, of Greece. This kingdom continued in power so okay, much later, sorry, until about 476 AD. So after the destruction of the temple, they continued on in power and then, you know, until 476 AD. The fifth and last kingdom in Nebuchadnezzar's dream was represented the, the future revised Rem Roman Empire and was depicted by the feet and toes of iron and clay. Okay, which iron and clay don't mix. Verses 33 and 35 and 44. It will be destroyed by the stone from heaven. Jesus Christ. Okay, the Messiah. The ten kingdoms will be formed and ruled by ten kings and will be in existence in the last days. In the last days before the coming of Christ. So it kind of sounds like, you know, you know, like the United Nations or something. Because there's like ten major sections, right? But, you know, um, we'll have to find out. We'll read and find out. Okay, the kings will rule during the first three and one and a half years of the 70th week. This is seven years of tribulation. But then the Antichrist will be in complete command the last three and one and a half years. Okay, three and one half years, so three and a half years. All right. The five kingdoms seen in Nebuchadnezzar's dream involve Babylon, Medo-Persia, Rome, and the future revised Roman Empire. The feet of iron and clay will not exist until the time of the Great Tribulation. So it's not here yet. That kingdom's not here yet. The years given for Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome are not intended to cover the entire history of these nations, but only uh, those periods during which of each of these great powers exercised world dominance. Okay? The stone, can't see that, sorry, smiting the image of this uh, image symbolizes the kingdom of heaven, uh, headed by the Lord Jesus Christ. He will, at his second coming, destroy the kingdoms of the world. Okay, so you can read this in um, verses 35, 45, 40, uh, 44, 45, uh, chapter 7, verse 13 through 27, Zechariah 14, uh, verses 1 through 21, Matthew 24, uh, verse 29 through 31, uh, Matthew 25, uh, verse 31 through 46, Second Thessalonians uh, 1, uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 7 through 11, and chapter 2, verse 4 through 8, Jude, uh, 1, 14, sorry, Revelations 11, uh, 15, 19, 11, and 20, uh, verse 7. Jesus himself is called a stone, okay? Psalm 118, verse 22, Matthew 21, 44, the stone, the, the builders rejected, right? Ephesians uh, chapter 2, 19 through 22, and uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse, uh, verses 6 through 8. This, this phrase, without hands, verse 34, emphasizes that the return of Jesus will not be due to human uh, instrumentality, okay? Nothing that humans do, but rather an act of God. The kingdom of God will be set up in the time of Jesus' second coming, never to be destroyed, never to be destroyed, okay? The first kingdom in Nebuchadnezzar, 
Nebuchadnezzar's dream was his own empire, the third empire, world empire, to actually persecute Israel. The first was Egypt, okay? And the second, Assyria, making Babylon the third, Medo -Per Persia the fourth, Greece the fifth, Rome the sixth, and the revised empire during the days of the Antichrist, the seventh world empire. This is important to remember these, okay? There's going to be seven world empires. The eighth will be the kingdom of the Antichrist, and the ninth will be the kingdom of heaven under the Messiah. Okay, Jesus is coming back again and will smite the world system and pulverize them. The wickedness of the world will be completely defeated by the power of his greatness and glory. The evil leaders of the world will be finished. The last kingdom under the Antichrist will be destroyed. The stone that Neb Nebuchadnezzar uh, saw will grow into a veritable mountain that will fill and cover the entire earth. Praise the Lord! I love how this um, person who wrote this commentary in the Bible, he, 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 just, he is just writing this and these thoughts are filling, you know, these facts he's looking at these facts and he's just so overwhelmed that he just you know writes praise the lord <laughs> that's that's pretty cool okay so i'm going to stop here okay and come back and do another part to this commentary all right so um i love you all i will be, I will be back later i bless you in the mighty name of yeshua i'm out bye